YouTube. So, um, I'm making this video to talk about the fact that I got frozen pink strawberry lemonade today. It was a good day. No, in reality, I'm here to talk about the Genzuki license because when I started this process, um, I sort of had to Google search all over the internet to find all the stuff that I needed. Uh, so I figured I'd make this video to help make the process easier for all of you so that you can learn how to get it better. Um, so for the people who are here and might be thinking about getting a Genzuki license, I'll have a lot of that information towards the beginning, like actual resources you can use. And for anyone who's just curious, like I'll describe the full process of the Japanese DMV in detail in the later bit of this. So first of all, I will show you, let me cover up the essential information. This is a Japanese driver's license. They're really, really plain looking. Um, as you can see, the picture is not the best because that is the face of someone who was tortured at the DMV for all day. And down here at the bottom, you can see where it licenses me to, licenses me to drive again, Zuki. Um, though I guess I can't complain too much that the licenses are plain because that'd be like if the American driver's license had like bald eagles and apple pies all over it. <coughs> so to actually study for this test, I started um, about three days before I actually took it. Um, I found six Genzuki practice tests online, and I'll put the link to that in the description. And those were easily the most helpful part of it, because that got you used to this test having the worst sort of grammar ever. Um, first of all, the Genzuki test is 45 true er, 47 true-false questions. Questions 46 and 47 are like three-parters, where they give you a picture of a situation and it's like, you are driving along at 30 kilometers per hour. What, what about the situation? So, well, I say it's true-false. It's more like correct-not-correct. Correct. So it's like a marubatsu test. And the test itself is actually pretty difficult, um, just for the fact of its wording. Uh, you can take it in Japanese if you want, but I, honest to God, don't know the words for things like decelerate in Japanese. So if I'm going to fail a test, I want to know that I failed it in my native language and that I've got no excuses as to why I failed it. I'm just dumb. So I took the test in English with its awful grammar. Like, one of the practice tests literally reads, When ride a two-wheel... Oh no, I'm sorry, it didn't even use the article. When ride two-wheel, I ride match my physique. That's what it was. So, it's one of those where you can understand kind of what it's talking about, but if you're one of those who already feels kind of uncomfortable taking tests and you're a little worried, like that sort of grammar ambiguity is probably gonna bother you somewhere in your head like it does me. Um, oh, sorry, my, my cat is playing Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, so basically how it works is, so I studied those and I took those tests like two or three times each until they were memorized. To learn the rules of the road, apparently the JAF, the Japan Automobile Federation, apparently puts out like a translated copy of the rules of the road and you can send them like a thousand yen plus postage and they'll send one back to you. But that previous sentence right there is like literally the only information I have on that. I never found an address. I never found out how much postage was. So what I did instead is the Yokosuka branch of the US Navy has their rules of the road book for all the sailors and dependents and who all who come out here. So that's available as a PDF online from one of their sites. I'll put the link below. And the last half of it is just rules about being driving on base and that stuff so you can ignore it. The first half is the Japanese rules of the road, and they've also got a guide for like road signs and, and stuff as well. For the large part, most of the driving rules here are the same. Um, some notable differences are like that Genzuki vehicles have to make a special right turn most of the time. Uh, there's the difference in how passing works. And there's a difference as far of like as right of way goes. Like when you come to a non-controlled intersection, um, it's not just like whoever gets there first has right of way, and it's obviously not the person on the right gets right of way because it's Japan, it's the left. Um, but yeah, not even that's not correct. Um, but yeah, that's explained in more detail there. Um, also, I apologize in advance for calling it Genzuki all the time instead of scooter. It's just I've had to do like most of this process in Japanese, so I've gotten very very used to the word Genzuki instead of scooter. But anyway, so I studied those two things like mad, and that largely prepared me for the test. When I actually got to the sit-down test, um, the test had quite a few more questions about, like, 
motorcycle maintenance itself. Like, it asks the question, like, the chain on a motorbike should be tight with no slack. And the answer to that's false. But, like, obviously that's not on any of my previous Genzuki tests and it's not in the rules of the road. So you should probably look up some other advice on um, scooter driving. Uh, I honestly don't have anything to direct you to for that. Um, Jerry rides a motorcycle, so a lot of my motorcycle knowledge just comes from talking to him. So that's how I got through that bit. So yes, as far as actually going to the DMV, um, when you go, it will be an all-day event. Like, be prepared to be there from 8 in the morning until 5 p.m. because they make it take that long. There's no way you can get out of it. For your prefecture, you'll have to look up where your DMV is because there's pretty there's probably one or two for your entire prefecture. Like for those of us in Kanagawa, we have to go over to Yokohama, and it's not that big of a deal. It's like an hour trek from where I live. So, but it's really early in the morning and it kind of sucks. Um, but I got there around eight in the morning. And registration is from 8 to 9, she said. So when you go to the DMV, you just need to make sure that you bring with you um, your Todokusho will be required. You'll need a Jumin Hyo, or the residency certificate, which you can get from your city hall that you live at, and it'll be like 200 yen. It took me about five minutes. It's not a big deal. Um, you might want to bring your passport, just in case, but I was never asked for mine. And then you need approximately 7,500 yen for the whole process if you pass. So just bring like at least 8,000 yen with you. Um, also, be aware that the entire day, um, no one there speaks English. So you should bring a Japanese person along with you, speak Japanese, or I honestly don't know. Like I was kind of tempted to find out and ask, like just to say like, no, I don't understand you and see what would happen. I'm honestly not sure. Uh, so yeah, if you don't speak Japanese, you may want to look into that. So I walk up and I'm like, hey, I want to take a Genzuki test. And she goes, we don't serve military. Because the military goes through the U.S. Navy base. They've got their own thing. And I was like, right, I'm not military. And she goes, but you're white. And like, you know, I'm kind of like, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not doing, I'm not doing this white thing today. I was like, well, I can't be certain but I've got a Gai Kokujin Todok show and an instructor's visa, so I don't think I'm with the military. And she was like, okay, well, can I see those then? So I hand them over, she looks at them, and she's like, okay, do you have your Jumin Hyo? So I was like, I do have a Jumin Hyo. And she was like, oh, well, okay then. And I was like, yeah, so? And she's like, and you want a Genzuki test? And I was like, yeah, I'd like to take a Genzuki test. And she goes, can you specifically tell me the name of, of what you need? And I'm like, I want to take the Genzuki Unten Menkyoshiken. <clears throat> the, the driving test for a Genzuki. And she's like, okay, okay, fine. Um, you know, go register over there at window one and then go to window G and do that. So, I get a form and you just have to write like your address and stuff on it. And then like, I guess, it's kind of interesting how, how Japan handles the payment markers for this. You have to go to window one, and they, you give them like the 1,500 yen. And they give you like postage stamps, like very big postage stamps, and you have to put that on your form. And then you also have to have like a small photo, and they're very specific. It has to be like two centimeters by three centimeters or something. And you have to cut it to the right size and put it on there. But that photo is not the one on my license. This was taken at the DMV. Um, so I don't actually know the purpose of that first very exact proportions photo. I've honestly got nothing. So anyway, so I get over to window G, which is the main registration area for a Genzuki test. And you have to go through like a colorblind test, which is like a very simple stripe of six colors. And you have to read, you know, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. And then you take a very short vision test, which in Japan is done by, like, there's a circle, and there'll be a hole at, like, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right, and you have to say, like, which direction that hole is facing. So you walk up there, and it's literally just, okay, ue, migi, shita, and there, you're done. You've passed your vision test. So after that thorough examination of my ability to see, um, I was sent on to wait for another 45 minutes or so. Um, so I just used the time to review... And I also had, like, some frosted mini-wheats with me, 
which um, I found out that in Japan, they don't have anything like frosted mini wheats. Because everyone around me was like muttering, like, what, what is that? What does she have? Is that like gaijin food? What is that? I got, what on earth is she eating? What's the white stuff on it? It's probably sugar. Gaijins love sugar. So like that whole thing continued. And then like, they call you up, they're like, okay, everyone who's going to take a Genzuki exam. And they give you like a little green card or something. You have to take that with you. And they've literally got like strips of colored tape along the floor and they're like it's basically you cannot mess this process up the whole process is designed that it's very difficult for you to mess it up so you follow like the little green colored line all the way out to the next building up the staircase around the corner and then they've got a giant room which is about the length of one and a half like basketball gyms like it, it we had maybe 150 people take this test uh, just on this random Monday morning. So it seems to be a popular thing to do. Um, so you sit down, and they've got the number on your desk will become your test number, and that will become the holy grail of numbers, and if you lose it, you're screwed. So anyway, I sit down to take this test, and, you know, on all my paperwork, there's a giant, like, A for English written on my paperwork, because I did ask to take the English exam. So they're handing out all the papers, and this lady walks in, and she's like, so, someone's going to take the English exam today. Who's going to, who, who wants the English exam? And I kind of appreciate her playing dumb because it was very obviously me. I was the only foreigner in the room. So it's like, yeah, no, it's, it's me. But I appreciate you acting like it could have been someone else. Like, I appreciate the, the heads up of not assuming. So everyone else gets like, there's two different versions of the test to make sure no one cheats. And then there's mine which I guess no one could really cheat off of very well anyway. And they've all got different numbers. So the test, like, she went through the whole thing at first, like, you've got to use a number two pencil and blah de blah de blah de blah um, You have 30 minutes to complete it. We began the test at 10. Um, after 15 minutes, though, like, whenever you're done, you can turn it in and leave. So I finished in about 10 minutes and then took the next five minutes to review my answers and make sure. Um, there are a couple of them that I felt a little unsure on, because again, the wording can be very tricky. Uh, like one of the practice test examples was, um, so when you are turning into or turning out of a side road, you should proceed slowly and look for pedestrians. The answer to that is false, because you must come to a one second stop, and then proceed slowly looking for pedestrians. So it's one of those where you have to be kind of careful and make sure you're looking at the wording. So one of them that I had a, that I'm still not sure if I got it right or wrong, because they don't tell you. Um, the question was, when your car is stuck on the railroad track, you should immediately get out of the car, get off the track, and then wait for a train to come and stop. And I honestly wasn't sure which one that would or wouldn't be, because technically, the rules state that if your car stalls out on a railroad track, you should get out of it, walk aside, and then, like, if it's clear and there's no train coming, you should put your car in neutral and try to push it off the tracks if you can. But, you know, the wording was, it's stuck on the train tracks, which I can only assume means that, like, the barriers are down and you can't leave. In which case, obviously, you should get out of the car and leave the train tracks. So, as to whether or not that one's true or false, I've got no idea. So, there are a couple like that that I honestly kind of thought I was going to fail. Like, um, if I, if I, pa because I passed, it was probably by, like, a question or two. Like, you can only, by the way, the test is about 50 questions or so. You can only miss three. So that's why it's so hard. You have to make a 90 to pass. It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so I was really worried. And, like, so afterwards, we have to wait an hour. And they made a very big deal about it. Like, you know, the test results will be posted at 1120 and you need this three-digit number, and if you're not there at 1120, you're screwed. And I was like, I, what does that mean? Like, I don't understand. And I'll explain later exactly why you're screwed. So I had an hour to kill, so I went to, like, they've got a little cafeteria-style room, so I sat there and watched Doctor Who in a desperate attempt to keep my mind off of it, so I watched Daleks in Manhattan. So at 1120, I'm out there, and it's this whole production. Like, everyone is there in this giant group. They've got... Like, there's music that comes from the TV, and there's sound effects. 
And like at 1120 sharp, it, you know, says, okay, opening the, you know, results for the 11, for the 1120 results of the Genzuki exam. And it flips over and then it's got like the, you've seen it in anime where it's like they post all the numbers on a board and you look and see if yours is there. So by some miracle, mine was there. But 30 seconds later, it then says, okay, Genzuki results are closed and the whole thing flips over. And if you weren't there to see it, apparently what happens is you get to retake the test because they're not going to tell you. Uh, so it's a little harsh. So if you take the test, be there, like when the results are announced. So everyone who failed could go and like reschedule their test and they may have been able to take another one that afternoon. I don't know. Um, those of us who passed were taken back to a different classroom and about 30 of us had actually passed the test out of 150. So it's pretty serious business. And they've got a little paper application for a Genzuki form, uh, or for your Genzuki driver's license. And you're told very clearly, do not mess up on this form or all sorts of bad stuff is going to happen to you. Um, they also went through like a, an initial check like, okay, so no one here has applied for a driver's license within the last year. Okay, so no one here has taken the practical course in the last six months. And then she gets the part of, so no one here has a foreign driver's license, right? So no one here has a foreign driver's license, right? And then she's looking directly at me and going, Gai koku, un ten men kyo. And I'm, and I'm like, no, no one else has answered. Like, there's no need to say no or anything, but I'm sitting here like shaking my head. I'm like, no. And then, because my American license has expired by like a year. And this lady comes up to me and asks in Japanese, I'm sorry, do you understand Japanese? And I kind of wanted to say right there, like, no, I don't. Just to see what would happen. But I didn't. I said, yeah, no, I understand. I'm good. And then the lady asks again in that same, like, very stilted voice. Gai koku! Un ten ben kyo sho! And I'm like, arimasen. Nai. Nakata. Arimasen. Got nothing. <laughs> like, don't know what you want. So she's like, okay. And then proceeds to explain the whole thing that the... Um, when you pass the Genzuki course, you don't have to take a practical driving test, but you do have to take a practical driving course, which is another, like, 4,200 yen or something, and then you have to pay for the license afterwards, which is another, like, 1,000-something yen, so that's why the whole thing adds up to be about 7,000. Um, but yeah, so they go through all the details, like, the course will begin at 125, you should meet here at this escalator, which is why I say if you don't understand Japanese, you should either bring someone along who does or learn Japanese real fast. Because I honestly don't know what they would have done if I didn't speak Japanese and I was there by myself. Because no one there spoke English. So, you know, they explain that whole thing. And then you're dismissed for lunch for, like, I think we had, like, two hours. It was something ridiculous. So I went back to the cafeteria, ate some choco bread, watched more Doctor Who. So, yeah, from 1.30 we all gather back up. And then we have to go get our initial forms back just so we can give them to another bureaucrat like literally 30 seconds later um, but they insist on calling out everyone's names so she goes down this whole list you know Genki, Daisuke, Tatsuya, blah 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 and then she pauses on a paper and I'm like it's mine you know what it's, it's probably mine and she's like no I have to read it and of course my name's written in katakana as well so it's like eh F and I'm like, yeah, no, like, just, it's cool, like, don't worry, just take it. <laughs> so then you go get in line and you get the other picture taken, which is what actually goes on your license. Um, because all the licenses here have IC chips, too, you're required to make up two, like, four-digit passcode numbers, and you set those at that time as well. Um, and then you give out th over that paper, and they give you another small paper, which is, like, it's the thing you attach another, like, 1,000 yen worth of stamps to, and I think, like, I never actually bothered to check, but I think that's the final, f it, we turned it in at the very end, I think it's, like, your final receipt for, like, you can now get a physical license card. But anyway, after you go through and do that paperwork, it only takes, like, five minutes for everyone to get through. You're taken out to the practical driving center, and, you know, they give you a spiel about, like, okay, we're all gonna ride Genzuki's now, and it's okay if you've never driven before, so let's get into groups, like there's the group of people who have never driven, and then there's the group of people with some experience, and they can go over here. 
So I got in with the people who have never driven before, because I've been a passenger on a motorcycle, I've never driven it. And they go through this whole, like, very long explanation of, you know, how to wear your helmet, and why you should wear gloves, and here's the parts of a Genzuki, and here's how this, this, and this works. When you get on a Genzuki, you need to put your right hand on it, look back, check for traffic, then you'll put your right foot on, then you'll put your right foot on this handle, you'll grab the brakes, you have to squeeze the left brake, turn the key, hit the ignition button or kickstart or whatever you have to do. And they go through this whole thing and it's it's very boring and like the, the spoken explanation takes like 30 minutes. And like I'm kind of wondering, like, I know that people are this stupid back in America too, like I've been to the DMV in America, there's plenty of stupid people. But when we get to the part about the helmets, like he gives you, they're essentially like baseball helmets, they're just like metal caps. And he says, okay, you need to put it on like properly over your eyes. And this girl next to me is wearing a ponytail, and I guess she just absolutely did not want to have to take that ponytail out. So she's got the helmet, like, tilted at a 45-degree angle, like this. And the dude was like, no, 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 like, pull it down. And she was like, there! And he's like, no, I mean down. And again, she goes, you know, tick. And he's like, no, like, properly over your eyes, like, where your bangs are, lady, pull it down. And then, you know, he finally tells the other instructor, he's like, would you go help that girl put her helmet on properly? And the dude comes over to me at first and starts, like, fiddling. And the dude was like, no, not the gaijin with the properly adjusted helmet, the girl next to her with the obviously wrong helmet. And she still kept, like, knocking it back. And I don't know what the issue was. She also was wearing, like, three-inch heels to a driver's test. And that's the other part is that if you're going to the Genzuki test, because of this practical, you have to be wearing, like, pants and like proper shoes for it. They wound up giving the girl like some slip-on shoes that she could wear, but if you're a gaijin and your feet are kind of big, um, you should probably just wear the proper shoes. So another thing that would happen is that like at frequent points during his spoken explanation, the guy would frequently turn to me and be like, gaijin-san, wakarimasu ka? And like, gaijin, do you understand? And like, once I have to deal with a certain amount of bureaucracy and paperwork and boring stuff for a day, like my brain just sort of like, I stop caring. I go into, like, an absolutely no fucks or given zone. So I basically just said back, like, Hi, Nihonjin-san, I'm okay, wakarimasu. You know, like, yes, Japanese person, I'm good. And the first time he stared at me, he was like, Why did you call me Nihonjin-san? I'm like, why did you call me Gaikokujin-san? Okay, fair play, Gaijin-san, fair play. So, like, it became a bit of a joke, like, for the rest of this whole process, that, like, every time he called me Gaijin-san, I would just call him back Nihonjin-san. And, I mean, the, the actual, after that, you're split into three different groups, so that you can go in, like, different, different things, and you can actually ride the Genzuki. And by ride the Genzuki, I mean that in the most loose sense of the term. Like, this course is a joke, honestly. Like, if you absolutely have no idea what you're doing with a scooter, it's probably good for you, but honestly, like, I'm now licensed to drive a scooter, and I don't think I should be. I'm gonna need a lot more practice before I go near a road. Because what you do is, for the first bit, you have to practice that whole, like, put your left hand here, put your right hand on the seat. Now look back, now look forward, now do this, and then it's like, touch the handles, touch the brakes, touch the handles, the brakes, handles, brakes, handles, brakes. And then they're like, okay, turn on your left blinker, turn on your right blinker. Left blinker, right blinker, left blinker, right blinker, headlight. <laughs> and like, you go through that, and then they finally let you like, okay, now you may turn it on. Now still hold on the brakes so that you're not going anywhere. Now play with the throttle a bit, get used to that. All right, now like, keep your feet on the ground, and like, very lightly use the throttle to like, walk yourself forward, like, half a meter or something. And then after you do that like, five times, they let you Drive the Genzuki maybe one meter with a dude like holding on to the back rack like the entire time running with you. And then after the other two groups do that, you get to come back. And this time, you get to drive for three meters with a dude holding on to the back of it. And then you all repeat that. And then the third time through, you get to drive for five meters. Five whole meters. And this time the dude's not holding on to the back of your Genzuki that you have to drive. And you're not going any faster than a dude can run, obviously. So you're not, you're not topping three kilometers per hour. You're not going any faster than that. 
So, and then afterwards, like, all the three groups had completed that, the five-meter stretch. And then he calls everyone up, and he's like, okay, everyone pay attention, because it's, like, super important. Um, you know, when it comes to actually turning um, on a motorcycle, like, if you're going around a curve, you kind of want to, like, push in, like you're riding a bicycle or something. You don't, like, physically turn the handlebars really anywhere. You just kind of lean and go with it. Um, so you're saying, like, on a Genzuki, because your throttle's on the right hand. So if you're going to turn left, you're, you're going to push into it with your right hand. So you have to be very careful, because if you, if you mess it up and you pull back, like, you've just killed yourself because you accelerated into a curve and you're dead. Um, likewise, if you try to apply that brake, your front wheel's going to lock out and you're going to skirm and you're going to die. So he was like, you know, that's very important. So when you're, cur when you're turning, be very careful about that. All right, Genzuki practical is done. Mina-san, otsukare-sama And I'm like, wait, seriously? That, that's, we didn't even turn. You just told us how it's really dangerous and really difficult. And we're not going to... Oh, okay, sure. And if you were in the group that said you had some riding experience, like I saw them practicing turning, so I kind of wish I'd lied a little bit and gone and done that because I still had to do the beginning basic part as well. So by now, it's roughly like 3.30 or so. And you have to go do the final bit, which is a safety video and a safety lecture by the chief of police. And this video that they show you is basically the, the equivalent of the Surgeon General's warning on cigarettes, where, like, on cigarettes there's a little box that says, like, warning, smoking these will definitely give you love, lung cancer. If you're smart, you will not smoke these. This video is essentially that, where, like, it literally begins with, like, it's this dude, like, on a Genzuki, like, coming up on an intersection, and the voiceover is saying, like, you're a Genzuki, riding along the road. You're coming up on an intersection. There's another car there in front of you who wants to turn right, but of course you have the right of way, so you continue on. And then the car doesn't see you and he swerves into you and, like, you die. And every single time it does this, it has, like, this effect where, like, it slows down and there's this white fade in. And, like, it, you kind of want it to have the Resident Evil, you died, screen right after it. And so it literally, the entire video is just how you're gonna die riding a scooter. Like, you know, it's sitting here like, oh, again, Zuki's passing along some cars. Looks, and it's like, oh, that's totally okay, because again, Zuki's are allowed to pass by on the shoulder. And a car opens its door and you died. It's like, oh, again, Zuki tried to make a stop because a car didn't see him. Too bad that the brakes will kind of, like, if you apply the brakes in any quick motion, you're going to, like, lock out or something, and so you're going to die. And it just keeps doing that. Like, literally, that's the entirety of the ten minutes is the many ways that you will die on a Genzuki. Like, the video itself is titled, like, For the Sake of Safety at Intersections. But it really, it tells you all the ways you're gonna die. On curves, on downhills and uphills, you're gonna die. So then the chief of police gets up there, and he begins his lecture about how you're gonna die. But he has numbers and facts. Like, he doesn't have more visual representations. So he starts with, like, in Kanagawa Prefecture, it has the second highest rate of traffic accidents in the entire country. So it's like five and a half million people last year were involved in traffic accidents somehow. And he's got a little pie chart and he's like, you know, 50% or so of those were pedestrians who were walking along and you got caught up. Another like 30% or something are two-wheeled vehicles. He's looking around the room like, Genzukis are two-wheeled vehicles. All of you, you know that, right? And then he proceeds to, like, show more information about how blind spots are your worst enemy and you're going to die, because pretty much everywhere Genzuki drives is in the blind spot. And my favorite part is that the, the word for blind spot in Japanese is apparently written as death corner, which I'm not sure if that's the actual word. It probably is, but I, I didn't know. It could also have just been to drive home this man's point that, like... Death corner. You're gonna die in it because this is the corner of Genzuki death. Um, so he continues on, like all these facts and all these figures, and he's like, You all, you all heard what I said, right? 13% of people involved in Genzuki accidents last year died. Most of those from head injuries. You're all still sitting here, aren't you? Um, right. So, death corners, you're going to die by every single car on the road. You're all still here, aren't you? You know what? Fine. 
Like, and he, he almost looked sad and disappointed when he ended. Like, he was like, I, I tried. I tried to save you, and none of you were interested. So, like, just go. Just get your license and get out. So, at that point, you, you like, go ahead, and everyone's walking really slowly. So, I just sort of, like, breezed past them to go get my license because I wanted out of here. So, then you just go, and you hand over your last little slip of receipt with, an, with that, you know, thousand yen stamp to it. And then they give you your little plastic card. And you're now perfectly licensed. And I still am not sure how.